from Kew to Kew, Kew Gardens and the fascinating study of trees. And what more fascinating than the magnolia with its quaint cucumber-like blossoms and subtle link with the mysterious east. Most of our native trees haven't its luxuriant foliage, but they're of sturdier stock. The poplar, unlike some of the he's and she's, these trees are fond of our climate. The ornamental holly tree, there are about 170 in the family, which probably started the great idea of holly at the Christmas reunion. The weeping willow, or artist's joy. They like to take plenty of water with it and are generally found by river banks. It's from the willow, of course, that cricket bats are made. The cedar of Lebanon, or poet's pride, because of its stateliness and strength, it's the symbol of power, exalted above all trees of the field. The British oak is easily distinguished by its large straight trunk, closely furrowed bark and knotted sturdy branches. Compare it with the smooth beech, though he's a big fellow too, often towering to 150 feet. Sometimes, as you see, he looks just like his human counterpart. The pine is rather a softy, and for that reason his resinous wood is in great demand for timber. The linden, or lime tree, with its sweet-scented, honeyed flowers. Each tree has its own peculiar leaf, and leaves are divided into various definite classes, each with its own special name. Under the heading of form come these. Into another category, these. The simple leaves, as they're called, are classified according to the arrangement of their petals. Then there is the point classification. And an even further group. Modern trees and plants are divided into these classes. In the terribly distant past, it was the curious fern trees that gave us coal, and the people of those times the jitters. The barks were very scaly. Yes, trees were sure tough in those days, and uh, talking of barks, they had to be with such gay dogs around. So let's.